Welcome to Playing the 18th Century. I'm Dr. M. Friedman, and I want to convince you to set your next role-playing campaign in the 18th century. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. But first, what do I mean when I'm talking about the long 18th century? I am a British literary historian, so take this with all of the caveats necessary because I'm a professor and we love a good caveat, but the long 18th century is generally understood to have begun in 1660 with the restoration of Charles II to the throne of England. After some time he spent partying in France, discovering that actresses were a thing, and presumably getting over the trauma of his dad being beheaded. Um, and the period continues until the crowning of Queen Victoria in the 1830s, and thus the start of the Victorian period. It's a period that has an enormous amount of social, technological, political change. There's a lot of messy drama in it. In other words, it's perfect for our purposes. Let's start with our quest giver, Horace Walpole, an author, antiquarian, second generation politician, widely traveled, and the inventor of the Gothic novel. He is the perfect gateway character uh, to connect you to lots of different people and places in the 18th century. Moreover, the home that Walpole built between 1749 and 1776, Strawberry Hill House, is a perfect place if you're trying to dip your toes into the 18th century but want to keep a little bit of medieval flavor. While the house has absolutely no medieval underpinnings underneath it, it is an example of the Gothic revival style, which Walpole basically invented. So every part of this house is inspired by real Gothic architecture, but is totally new to the 18th century. It's this beautiful combination that's a great bridge, especially for a D&D campaign. For our purposes, Strawberry Hill House is also really useful because it has been extensively documented and digitized online, thanks in no small part to the Lewis Walpole Library at Yale University. To begin with, in 1784, Walpole documented both the house, the grounds, and an inventory of all the furniture, pictures, and curiosities that were inside the house at the time of publication. And of course, he printed it on his own printing press, which he also had at Strawberry Hill. Not only did he textually describe all of these things, he also had it lavishly illustrated with engravings of both the interior as well as maps and elevations of the exterior as well. The Lewis Walpole Library has digitized much of this material and moreover, turned it into this amazing virtual tour, which translates very neatly into a new setting. As you can see here, they've created a very clean floor plan that you can overlay onto a grid or hex as needed. This is what I did for my first one shot uh, involving Strawberry Hill House. Each lettered room uh, that's large enough to have objects in it has a link. When you click the link, it will take you to an image of the room itself from that description of the villa as well as create a uh, mouse overable area where you can click through to individual objects. The objects are very uh, detailed uh, descriptions, photographs where possible, that gives you an, an instant amount of lore to draw from. It's a really amazing resource. Once you have your sense of the space and how to navigate through it and what objects you want to focus on down, you can then take advantage of the fact that this has been an enormously photographed building and grounds since its restoration in 2010. A simple search on your search engine of choice will show you a plethora of vivid, magical, inspiring images throughout the, the space, which you can then link back to the illustrations from the description of the villa. 
I can't tell you how incredibly useful this is for immersion. And of course, you may not want to set your D&D adventure in a straight 18th century British context. Horace Walpole would approve of you taking the house and its environs and dropping it into a kind of imagined quasi 18th century with a touch of fantasy. After all, as we could talk about in a later video, Walpole himself used the trappings of the historical past to tell fantastic stories of revenge and giant statues and helmets falling from the sky. So consider this also a way of just having a ready-made house and a whole bunch of stuff uh, built in. Uh, just add monsters. This video has inspired you to dive into all of the 18th century has to offer to the designer of any setting. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments, or you can tweet at me at Fried, F-R-I-E-D-E. Always happy to talk 18th century with my fellow tabletop nerds. And until next time, thanks for watching.